we will have an existential shock. A type one civilization has the power of an entire planet. They control the weather. They mine the oceans. They control volcanoes. They control earthquakes. We are now witnessing the greatest transition in the history of the human race. Transition from type zero to type one. The generation now alive is privileged to see the birth pangs of the birth of a new civilization. And Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez has once again accused the United States of playing God. But this time it's Haiti's disastrous earthquake that he thinks the U.S. was behind. Spanish newspaper ABC quotes Chavez as saying that the U.S. Navy launched a weapon capable of inducing a powerful earthquake off the shore of Haiti. He adds that this time it was only a drill and the final target is destroying and taking over Iran. The existence of a tectonic weapon has never been proved but its use is often suspected. Last year I confronted Heizo Takenaka the former Japanese finance minister, over why he handed over control of the Japanese financial system to a group of American and European oligarchs. He and his envoy told me that it was because Japan had been threatened by an earthquake machine. I did not believe it at the time. However, when I started exposing some of their doings, I was told by the Japanese security police that because of what I had said on places like rents.com that Niigata City was going to be hit by an earthquake. Two days later, Japan's largest nuclear reactor was the exact epicenter of two earthquakes, both 6.8 in magnitude. Japan just had a very, very friendly summit meeting with China, where the emperor met the Chinese leader three times. There is a possibility a part of Japan will sink. It will not be an accident. It will be created by, by the world government. Tonight, breaking news, Japan's tsunami disaster. A huge quake triggers chaos as people flee swaying buildings and city fires. coincidence for me. So I started doing research and found out about HARP, H-A-A-R-P, and I realized that they really did know how to make earthquakes, and they do it by shooting a billion watt microwave into the ionosphere, which is the part of the atmosphere that has a lot of energy in it, that pushes the ionosphere up into outer space and then it rebounds. And the way it rebounds can cause earthquakes. Just like an opera singer can break a glass by singing at a certain level, or by dragging your fingernails on a blackboard, you feel a weird sensation. If they adjust the vibration for the rock underneath their target site, they can do that. Originally approached me in 1984, to find a use for the natural gas on the north slope of Alaska, which they could not sell. To give you a feel for how much gas they asked me to find an application for, it was enough gas to produce all the electricity in the United States for a full year. I originated some ideas for military applications and beneficial civilian applications. Applications uh, discussed in the patents included destroying missiles. Communications control and disruption were included. There were some other ideas both to possibly modify weather and finally uh, to lift a portion of the upper atmosphere further out into space. I chose a what's called a phased array antenna 
for the patents because it can be aimed. Picture holding your microwave oven in your hands with the door open. Then you can move it around and send those microwaves different directions. And for these applications where I wanted precise control of where the power was, uh, I felt that was the best type of antenna to use. And that is the kind that HARP has built. HARP can paint um, designs in the sky, if you will. You know, it can take the beam and move it in, in any pattern that you, that the scientist who's doing an experiment might want to do. If you beamed it for an hour and a half, that would equal the energy in a hydrogen bomb. After I had actually left the program in 1987, one of the last communications I had uh, uh, with ARCO indicated that there had been a contract awarded for ionospheric warfare studies. And remember, a billion watt microwave. What does microwave do to water? It heats it up. Now imagine if you put a billion watts into a tropical storm. You could make it much bigger. Three hurricanes, three of them at one time. Now, after the earthquakes hit Niigata, a member of the Inagawa crime family, which is based in around the U.S. Yokosuka Air Base, and members of the Inagawa family have told me that their big boss is George Bush Sr. In other words, they work for Skull and Bones. And they invited me to a so-called UFO gathering where they showed me the video of this blob. They told me it was a UFO, but it was obviously, to me anyway, a plasma uh, weapon or a ball of heat created by something like a billion watt microwave. And I predicted in my blog that there would be videos of lights found above China before the earthquake and those videos then appeared on the internet after I predicted they would and furthermore a Taiwanese satellite detected a 50% drop in the ionosphere in the amount of electric energy in the ionosphere above the earthquake zone now a 50% drop would be exactly what would happen with HARP it would push the ionosphere up and then it would slam back down. The instant that we energized it, there was between a 4 and 4.5 on the Richter scale earthquake that occurred. We were so amazed about what seemed to be cause and effect. We get to an area that has a high propensity for earthquakes in an area known as the megathrust of the Pacific Northwest. We turn it on and an earthquake occurs. Is it more than coincidence that since going online, some experts have reported strange weather anomalies, including massive floods, hurricanes, and earthquakes. HARP went online in 1994, and construction continued until 2007. There are reportedly a total of five known ionospheric heaters, including HARP, in the world today. There are possibly 20 other ionospheric heaters in existence all over the world. Forever restless and untethered by concerns of practicality and marketability, Tesla's mind spawned a vast miscellany of odd inventions. Many of these were never developed beyond the concept stage, and the ideas seemed to grow markedly weirder in the final years of Tesla's life. Invention was normally a deliberate process for Tesla, his every intention and goal fully formed before he and his crew lifted a finger. But there were times when he stumbled upon a new discovery by mistake. Tesla performed his first experiments with resonance technology at his New York laboratory by firing up a small oscillator which caused a minor amount of vibration. Suddenly, an alarmed squad of police officers stormed into the lab, demanding that Tesla stop at once. 
Manhattan was shaking for miles around. Tesla had not taken into account how resonance waves grow stronger the further they travel from their source. He had unintentionally created what became known as Tesla's earthquake machine.